Booyah, what's pop locking, y'all? Big cool boy, the body puppets, West Coast pop lockers, down here at Cool Boys Boxing Camp and Dance Academy. And this is my YouTube channel where I allow pop lockers to come and express themselves. Talk about what happened, talk about how it went down, and talk about what you're gonna do or what you did. You feel me? This is Cool Boys Pop Lock Channel. This has pop lock talk, y'all. Talk your shit. Booyah! Death Row. NFT. We're gonna yes. talk about all these niggas talking all this goddamn shit and fuck that. We're gonna bang out and ride, 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 ride. What's pop locking, y'all? Big cool boy. Bumping that whoop de whoop. By the dog pound. I'm in this video busting, y'all. Hold up, hold up. Let me see if I can let y'all see me. I got to get down in the dog pound video, man, for my birthday, too. We shot this for my birthday. For those who don't know, my birthday is March 21st. Woofy, whoa, check me out. There I go. Hold on, that, that wasn't good enough for me. I want to make sure y'all see me the right motherfucking way. Hold on now. Let's do this shit right. Here we go. The glare is, what the hell? Oh, I'm tripping, huh? Anyway, welcome to Pop Lock Talk, y'all. Here we go. Can you see Big Cool Boy? Ah, there we go. Anyway, who do who? Hey, on Pop Lock Talk today. Hey, the truth is about to be put out there today, y'all. The motherfucking truth is about to be told today. On Pop Lock Talk, we got a legend. We got a legend, man. Probably, probably one of the most legendary Pop Lockers that I've brought on my show so far, man. Um, Representing the city Linwood, Compton, California. Uh, and what I mean by legendary, I'm not saying one of the first. I'm talking about when it comes to this dance, it's about the streets. Was your name ringing in the streets? Was you putting work in the streets? It's like game, baby. Homie, was you putting in work? This pop locker right here, homie. Back in the day, if he heard your name and your name was ringing, he would come up to your school on lunchtime and look for your ass and bust on you in front of the whole school. Ladies and gentlemen, today on Pop Lock Talk, I got to stop the music. Today on Pop Lock Talk, y'all, we got the legendary one-armed bandit. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to bring him in. Hold on, and I'm going to play, I'm going to have him jam with me too to this whoop de whoop. I'm bringing one on Bandit in on Pop Lock Talk. This is an exclusive Death Row NFT. You know what I'm talking about? All these niggas talking all this goddamn shit and fuck that. We're going to bang out and ride, ride. Oh, shit! Yeah, the yeah. big homie. You're going to have to turn your mic on. There you go. Whoa, big whoa. That's a new jam by the Doll Pound. I'm pop locking in the video. Whoa, big whoa. Can you hear it? Uh oh. No, no. Oh, you see that hit with the chest? Woo, and he went right into the waves. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, I was gonna, I was gonna let you identify yourself, but I think I want to do it. I think I, I think I want to bring you in, homie. Ladies and gentlemen, on Pop Lock Talk, we have one of the most iconic Pop Lockers in the game. If you want to talk about being relevant, 
If you want to talk about being relevant, it doesn't get no more. This is the pinnacle of relevant right here. This is the pinnacle of relevant. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave y'all inconclusive to this. Mm -mm. I'm going to share some information with y'all coming straight out of Linwood, <laughs> California slash Compton, Compton boundaries as well. We got David Smythe, the original one arm bandit in the building. What's up, everybody? What's up, man? That was that was a nice introduction, bro. You, Thank you. Appreciate you appreciate that, that one? You appreciate that? Absolutely, absolutely. You know what? I ain't gonna take it away from you, man. I had to do it, but I'm gonna let you go ahead and identify yourself. Go. Man, let me start by saying, bro, your platform, the business, bro, straight up. This is what we needed, man. All the OGs, we needed somebody to come forward and say, hey, bro, let's. Let's get the history of these guys. Let's find out where these guys at, what they're doing, how they're living. It, it brought back, I mean, you're connecting everybody, bro. You're connecting everybody, bro. And that's like the pinnacle. It, get, it gets no better than that. No better than that. This game has been going on for a long time, and now we finally got a chance to get a voice out there. And, you know, I could have done it. Anybody could have done it, but you did you know what I'm saying? So y'all represent my boy, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all show some love for Cool Boy, man. All over the world, man. Thank Blow you, his homie. page up, bro. Blow his page up, man. Yeah. Come on. How you guys doing? They call me the one on bagger. I'm a copper from Compton. So check it out. On this show, you guys, this is the truth. You don't have to hear from the streets no more. This is the real truth of the people who invented, created, and was the dopest pop lockers in the game. It's not a regular YouTube channel. This is where you get the true history of what happened with Compton, all the way through LA, all the way over, how they toured all over the world, the Electric Boogaloo's, Wild Bandit, all kind of groups. So go on there if you're a dancer, your kids are dancing, or anybody that wants to get into this stuff right here, go on there, look it up, and you'll see the truth. I'm telling you, because this is from the mouths of the people who were there. I was there. I'm one of the people that was there in when Pop Locker first started. When the first person went, I saw it and everybody else saw it. You see what I'm saying? And how do I say that? Because I'm probably older than half of everybody in here. Even how old are you? He said, How old are you? I'm up there. I get down though, y'all. I'm telling you, ain't no fucking yeah. stuff. It's real stuff. Look. See how the face roll up. Look at that. Come on, we're talking pop lock talk. Y'all talking to the OG that was there when it started. Mm. All right? Because you know, Bandit, our story for pop locking was endless. It was endless. But now that we've created pop lock talk, it's still endless, but now things are coming together. Things are, the, the, the puzzle, the puzzle is starting to be, the puzzle ain't done, but right. the pieces are starting to lock in. Boom. Absolutely. Boom. The pieces are coming. Oh, that's how that got started. Oh, that, this how got, oh, that's who got that person started. Okay, now it makes it, you know, it's a domino effect. One thing hits the next thing. Yeah. It's a big puzzle too, man. <laughs> it's a huge puzzle. And we're going to finish it. Absolutely. We're going to get to the bottom of this, homie. <laughs> There's <laughs> so many questions, you know. There's so many questions that we need Yo, to know. Bro, we need go. answers. Uh, yeah, let's go. We need we need more than one show to get get the information out though correctly. Right. You right. know what I mean? But um, hey man, um, you ready to break some hearts? Cause when the truth is told, the truth is told, man. When it's told, it's told. People got to get their Kleenex box out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's truth. It's truth should be spoken, bro. If it's the truth, it's got to be told. Period. You know, we can't be hiding behind stuff because when we move on, bro, and the next generation get it, we don't want them to have false information. We want them to have the information that was legit, even if it's salty, even if it hurt somebody's feelings, even if we lost a competition, bro. The truth is the truth. I need the truth because I want Pop Lock Talk to be the library. I want Pop Lock Talk to be the encyclopedia for Pop Locking. What's up? We're going to be the resource to come to and be like, well, let's, to, yeah. let's pull this interview up and find out. 
We're going to be the Google of pop locking. Right. You heard it out of the horse's mouth. So, yeah. That's what's up, man. Hey, what's man. Up? Let's start off. I'm excited to be here, bro. Let me just start by saying I'm excited to be here. I, this, is, this is what they call Mando. It's mandatory, man, to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. You know, Absolutely. I know you came on the show when I very, very first started. And I think it was me, you, and Snap, and you know, um, G. Yeah. Papa G. Papa yeah. Diego. Yeah. And um, that was fun too. But we need your story. You know, Let's di go. direct. I'm ready, bro. <clears throat> like I said, man, you identify yourself first. Go ahead and tell them who you are, where you're from, and what you represent. Okay, y'all. So my name is David Smythe. Uh, they call me the one-armed bandit. I always say they call me the one-armed bandit because that's the name I chose for myself, and then I put it out there for them to call me bandit instead of saying David Smythe. In Linwood, the people, this is where I learned uh, my style. Let me, well, let me go back. I started in Compton. I started robot in Compton probably like in 72. Doing robot, you know, off of uh, James Brown. I saw James do it. I saw the Nicholas Brothers. I saw Sammy Davis Jr. I was seeing all these old school dudes, man. Bo Jangles, you know, and he started in 40. He started getting down like in the 20s, man, you know. So he had like in 43, he was doing movies that was like Hollywood movies that was just like really, really dope with Shirley Temple. And he would tap. You know, he's a tap dancer, but that's the first person I've seen do the front slide. That's the first person I've seen Bill Bojangles do the, the moonwalk. And there's another person that I won't expose just because it's on my documentary, but these are guys who, like, created this, really, really created this. There was nobody on the earth doing it but them at that time, you know. So these guys influenced me. So I started robotting. And then I started to uh, see Shields, Yarnells. I saw um, um, like Iron Giant, Iron Robot, and, and all these different, you know, uh, shows that was on TV that was leading me to say, hey, man, if I move like, bam, bam, I stop, ooh, bam, lean over to the side, ooh, bam, and head control, then I can learn how to robot. After about 74, 75, that's when I started popping. Hey, hold on. Before you go into popping, okay. and, and this is kind of steering off the subject a little bit, All but right. aren't you happy that Bo Jangle didn't teach Shirley Temple how to do that front glide? Because think about it. <laughs> she would have took the credit of creating it. Absolutely. But the truth would have came out. But you see how that could have went? We would have wanted to know. We would have wanted to know how was she able to complete or, or, or be able to do the front slide. Yeah. Where'd she get that from? I don't know, you know man. I mean, sometimes the truth is, like right now, but, but sometimes the truth is hidden, just like now. That's what we're struggling to fight against right now. Right. And, and another thing you said that really caught my attention. You said just now, you saw uh, 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 James Brown doing the robot. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah, I saw it. I saw him doing that when he was in his, like I would say he was around maybe about. I didn't. Know, I didn't know James Brown was hitting. I, I didn't James know he was robotting, man. Yeah. So you saw him before you saw Shields Yarnell. I saw Robert Shields. Shields. After, yeah, I saw James do it first. I Whoa. mean, all, all respect to all the other artists and stuff, yeah. but the culture, the culture of our people is the creators of the robot. You know, that's just the bottom line. It's not a, it's not a secret anymore. It's like everyone knows who created this stuff, you know. And it's not to take anything from anyone else because I think that it's a universal dance. I think that all cultures should be able to do it. Just show homage to the ones that came before you. That's the most important part of doing this dance. You no, you just mean? you just taught me something. I never, no one has never came on the show and said, hey. I saw James Brown doing it. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. I saw James do it first. That's what Michael's doing. When James comes down and goes to the side like this, it comes up and goes to the other side, and then his arm spins, and he goes side to side to maybe his left. Michael got that same exact move from him. You know who else used to do it? Jackie Wilson. Ooh. Sandman. Sammy Davis Jr. 
they, uh, uh, um, Bill Bojangles, which I mentioned earlier, Peg Legs, all of these guys, twins, uh, Gregory Hines brothers, Nicholas brothers, they were robots. It wasn't something that was on camera. But if you can get some old footage, you'll see it. Now, do I have that footage? Yes, I do. That's why I can stand here and speak on it. Ooh. I'm a history buff in, in the dance. Not just popping, but in the dance. All the way around the board. I'm not an expert on it, but I love it. I love it, bro. That's what I do. That's what I do. I I, I just I list everything from the Bay all the way to LA. So after the, so after the robot, you went into popping. Okay, so uh, somewhere in Linwood, man, I think that people were roboting because everybody was doing it. Man. Everybody was picking up, even your mom. You know, she get up going do that little stuff. Everybody started picking it up, but it was when Granny and the Robotroids uh, boo closed the counters. Um, um, of course, you know, back then they had they had blackface. Mm-hmm. Right? Hollywood had black, was doing blackface, which I'm not with that, but they were trying to do it. But where were they getting it from? They was getting it from Bill Bojangles. They was getting it from those people who had the roles, but was only allowed to do a piece of a spotlight in the film of Hollywood. You couldn't do the whole movie. You couldn't have talking roles. You could do your dance segment. We'll lock that into a ballroom scene, and you'll be able to be seen through that. So uh, I know for a fact that when I saw Granny, they were, and the robot brothers, that's what I'm saying, about, robot brothers. When they were roboting, I noticed at the end of the show, one of the robot brothers started popping. And I was looking like, what is that he's doing? It's only quick, you can look it up. Just look it up. Put in, put in uh, robot brothers on the gong show, 75. And you'll see at the end when the balloons come down, he starts going boom, 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 boom. Now, was it fast robot like Bob and Andre call it, a fast robot style, or like Pop and P call it like I was doing? Or you was doing a fast robot style, you wasn't really popping in 72. Okay, I can give you that. But in 75 and 76, I was hit. It's a proven fact. I graduated in 79. So I was popping up in my high school years. So with that being said, man, yeah, that's that's when I bought, that's when I started, like, actually taking my robot to another level and I started popping. Okay, so let me ask you this. That was watching the gong show. You were watching TV. Mm-hmm. But with your own eyes in person, who did you first see starting to get down? That's a good question, bro, because um, it was the Bay, man. The dudes from the Bay. That you saw in person, and not I on saw, TV. Okay, you saw, you're talking about in person? Yeah, because you were in Linwood. So who did you actually see in person? In person. <laughs> and you were already me. popping at this time. Me. But who... <laughs> me. Yeah, but you had to see me. you had to see someone else getting down to too. Inspire me. Oh God, who I mean I would have to give it to pop I'd mm-hmm. have to give it to them because there was stuff I was catching from my eye. I was going places. I was all over LA. There was house parties everywhere. So you, know, you... you go to show you stop. So and there was dudes that was doing something different. And you look over and you say, man, what is that? And you just pick it up right away. It's not something you go on the park. You just picked it up right away. So it was popping Pete first. And you know what? It don't, it don't have to... Look, do this for me, and this will make it easier for you. Give me, like, the top five dudes you first saw getting down in then went and Compton. Let's do it that way. Who were the first dudes you saw in the area that was busting? And what year was it? In 1977, I already had the box. And it was quite a few people that had the box. Spit your head up, you know, and spit it out and stuff like that. So it wasn't a specific person. I, I looked at him and I went, oh, my God, this dude's popular. It was Pop and Pete when I looked at him 
I said, oh my God, like these dudes are doing it and they're doing it really good. Like they're more advanced than me. You know what I mean? If I could, if I could say that, um, because I didn't understand what they were doing until I found out that this was called boogaloo. And that's when I was like, oh, they swing in their hips. They're throwing the twister flexes in a high rate and an upright position in suits, mm -hmm. three piece suits. Dude, I had on postal sack, khakis, suspenders, and a penalty like you got on right now. Mm -hmm. I was thugged out at that time, bro. Not gangstered out, but thugged out, meaning like I was hoodified, <laughs> if you wanted to call it that. Like all of us, we were trying to survive in the hood, just trying to watch out for bullets and watch out for gangs. So you, you, you become tough, you know what I'm saying, in a sense, with this dance. It became a lifesaver, you know? Not to go into clothing. But another reason why we were dressing that style, because it was affordable. Because it was what now? Affordable. Absolutely. Coca sacks and all that stuff, that stuff didn't Absolutely. cost a lot of money, man. It yeah, was what we were. Tom McCann's grabs the Coca sacks. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know about Tom McCann's. Tom McCann's. They don't know my, nah, them. they don't know. In, in my neighborhood, there was a Tom McCann's and a Kenny's. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, That's right. it. Rosecrans and Central. <laughs> yeah, and I spent much money on Coca Sacks. Yeah, Coca Sacks is for those who don't know, man. It's just like a little shoe with a brown bottom, and they look like a, a, a fedora, like not a fedora, but a. They look like a band, but they had like a knitting over the front, black it's a, knitting over it's, front. Like a, a good way shoe. to say it's a like it's a, a slip on shoe. shoe. Yeah. 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 No, you got some. It was some Coca Sacks that that were laced, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it they was the and they slip on and slip on. Yeah, yeah, right. It was like the fans before the bands became popular. Right. Yeah. Now tell me and this: then when gang members started wearing them, then it became like, oh, you must be a gang member because you got a croquet sack. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, there was a stereotype. That's when the stereotype came into the dance, mm -hmm. you know. But we didn't care. We still did our thing. One arm bandit. Yes, sir. Here is. <laughs> An iconic question for you, man. Who is the first person that you ever had a pop lock battle against? The Electric Boogaloo! <laughs> <laughs> what year Nobody was that? Would touch them, bro. I'm telling you, it was like. It was like meeting Michael Jackson for the first time, bro. Like when they walked into our school dance, we were robots and we were getting down, man. We had the we we didn't have the arm wave at that moment. Then we had the arm wave. You got to let them know what school that was. Linwood High. And you got to let them know in what year? This is in this is in seventy eight, going into seventy nine before I graduated. This is before seventy nine. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, man. I need right. you to tell me the detailed story. I'm going to sit back and listen on how that happened and how it went down. I want to know how it went down, man. Let me let me hear the story. Okay, so they even all had a dance. This was a spot to come to from all high schools would show up to this dance because it's a Hall. hall. This is a, another facility that's connected to our school, but it's in the park. So... Um, Bateman Hall had a dance. We're getting down. Everybody, it's a big dance. It's packed. Everybody's getting down. We got big circles. You know me. I'm turning, turning dudes out. I'm going in. <laughs> pop lock it. But I'm doing this, 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 this pop lock that's like not advanced. You know what I mean? But it's still tight. All of a sudden, I hear somebody go, real loud, like, and I turn, and like all the school, everybody's just turning. This is during the time the music's playing. And these dudes walk in. It's five of them. It's it's Skeeter Rabbit, Robot Dane, Chicken Will, Decky, Poppin' Pete, Puppy Boozer, a freaking Robot Dane. They walk in and they just stand there, man. They got on the full zoo suit, chains, the big apple hats, and the whole nine. And I'm looking, and everybody's looking. They get this big old crowd. So I'm looking at them, I'm like, y'all pop, what, what's up, you know? And they look at me and they don't say nothing, bro. And I just say, hey, my boy, like, call my D. Why not? 
boom, pow, did my little stuff on her, bam, boom, boom, start robot, boom, boom, roll their arm up, bam, boom, turn into boom, boom, coming at them. It was like, look at each other, it was like that, boom, boom, boom. Then Papa Pete pops out. Not advanced like he is now. Yeah. It was advanced. You know, my, my psyche, my mind was like, oh my God. Like, what I was looking at was what I was trying to do and trying to master it. So I had to hit. I had all the little, you know, side to side and turn, but it was all more like a robotic thing. You know what I mean? And so he's getting down and people are just losing it. Like, they're losing their mind. And then comes Skeeter Rabbit. People are losing their mind. Then Robot Dane comes out and does a little thing and vibrates. People are losing their mind. And I'm sitting here like, these dudes are dope. Like, they're amazing. The minute I saw them, picked it up just like that. Ooh. Not the boogaloo, but the idea, the principle, the formula. I got a chance to see the formula. Oh, so that's the way you turn that way to twist this way. But then they started doing something different. It's like they were dancing in a sense. And I was like, what is this? And that's when I, oh, and Boogaloo Sam. Got to tell you about Boogaloo Sam. And that's when Boogaloo Sam said it's Boogaloo. And I'm like, where is this from? I think he said Fresno or up north. And then... And that this is the first time you guys ever met, right? First time I ever met him. I heard about him. The word was coming around. There was this, these guys were going to show up to dance the Boogaloo. The Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. But it was, it was called the Boogaloos. It wasn't the Electric Boogaloos. They were the Boogaloos. That's all we knew. Boogaloos were coming. And uh, I connected with him right away. Boom. Went over to Skeeter House. Boom. Teach me the Boogaloo. He said, all right. It was him and Pete. It was at Southgate at Skeet's mom's house or Pete's mom's house. What are they? I think it's Skeet around his mom's house. Hold on. That's interesting because they catered to you immediately after they saw you dancing. Yeah. Because I don't think no, that, I don't me, think. They told, me I, they told me I was hard. They so they didn't get with no one else hard like hard that. Did they give anybody else props like that? Yeah, they was giving props out. It was the haters. But they definitely told me, like you and a dude Gil, there's another dude that's familiar with people don't to know about. His name is Gil. Hard, bro. He was hard. Now that's what I want to know. So boy, had a long perm. Put it in. You know what I mean? Getting it in. So I went over there and I started booking on it. I already kind of knew this. But then they started showing me this, this, this stuff. You know, the inner and the t t body twist and the arm up and your head turned and the arm up and then, and then this step to the side and come back up. And it's the, you know, Shamrock, you know, and then I was like, thanks. And it's like, come back tomorrow. I was like, no, I'm good. And I meant that. I was good. You know why? Because after that session that we had, it was only about an hour or two hours into just kicking it and, and just talking, and dancing and talking and showing me how it's done. You know, I picked it up in my mind like that. So when I got home, I was advanced already. So did they want to recruit you? Um, I'll say this. I asked Peter Rapid before he, before he passed. You know, God rest his soul. You want to do five, five seconds or whatever. You hear me? Yeah. Oh. One, two, three, four, five. Man, pop lock love to him. Skeeter pop lock Rapid. love, Skeeter. Man. Yeah, I was actually gonna wear Ski shirt, man. Man, Ski but, was dope, um, and he was a good yeah, dude. Yeah, so uh, I'll say this, man. When I was at Homeland, I went up to Ski and I talked to him, and we talked for two hours. But it was some things that I needed to know before I put my release, my documentary. You know, I needed to know some truthful creation stuff. And uh, I asked him. I said, "Bro, how you make Wiggles a Boogaloo before you make me a Boogaloo?" He said. We wanted to make you a boogaloo, bro, but you stand alone, man. You just get the one arm bandit, bro. There's no way you could be in the boogaloos. Mm. And I, there was nothing I could say to that, so I just accepted it. Not to take anything from Wiggles, but Wiggles came later in the boogaloo life 
than, than I did. I was already in the blues, like, mom, family. I know Pete, girl, family, mom, you know, all that was going on in, in, in the neighborhood in Compton, you know? So, yeah. And it's, I have total respect for him. So, I remember in one of your interviews, Peter has said that it ended bad for the one on Bandit, you know, because you asked him, how did that battle go? And he said it didn't go good for him. It didn't go good for me. Because that was the first time around, right? That was my first time seeing Boogaloo for the first time. So when you guys, was there another round where you guys met up before again? Uh, yeah, but we was not going at each other. It was a whole different language now. We're, we're talking about, we're talking about wherever I went, I called them. Hey, y'all coming? Y'all gonna be there? Y'all gonna be there? Yeah, we'll be there. And then two or three of them will show up, Ski and Pete. And I'll be there with them. So it's like, I wasn't a boogaloo, but I was there with them. Like, I'm not going in that circle. Bro, you don't go into a circle against popping people, or Skeeter Rabbit. You just don't do that. That's no no. That's a no no. But somebody, so but somebody did. But somebody, somebody did. Somebody, somebody, somebody right. used to go up against Skeet all the time, right? Anthony King. That was his nemesis, man. But Anthony can do that because Anthony is on that level. His game came up to, to Skeet's level. See, the Boogaloos will stay in their realm. That's what they do. This is what they do. They don't do uh, three pirouettes <laughs> in a circle. You know, they don't do jazz. They ain't doing hip-hop on you. They're not doing none of that. Not saying they can't do it. They're going to either lock on you or they're going to Boogaloo on you. And Peter's going to pop and Pete's going to pop them. So each one mastered different stuff in their group. Me, I had Boogaloo popping, tutting, strutting, kicking. Freedom Fillmore, I had learned all this quickly. By 1980, I was a beast in the, in the pop world. I was a God had blessed me with the gift to move like that. I was one of those ones, bro. I'm not afraid to admit it. It's not bragging and boasting. I was one of those ones on the earth that can really pop extremely well, even to this day. So I know about Bateman Hall. I love the story, man, about how you, you met with Electric... Boogaloos for the first time. But tell me some stories, man, about Eve After Dark. Who truly was holding it down? Because I've heard so many names. I hear Captain Crunch and the Funky Bunch. I hear Anthony King. I hear so many different stories. But I need to hear from you on what your story is. So you had guys coming from all over the world coming to that club. All the poppers that ever pop, lockers, you name it, they were all showing up. The truth of the matter is, I think we all was holding it down. We all had our ways about us, man. We were just devastating. You know what I'm saying? I saw Anthony King get out for the first time and I was scared. I was like, ooh, ooh he's nasty. Like, oh my God, I just do this like hard like me. Like, I battle him. His aura was too big for me to come out and just start. Bah, 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 bah. You don't do that. You observe and you give the man his respect and his credit and be like, yo, you dope, bro. Can you do me a now, favor? If he called me out, then it would have been about. Can you do me a he favor? Never did that. When you saw Anthony King, can you give me a description of his style and movement? Of course. Anthony was a hard popper, a hard tutter, a hard snaker, a hell of a twist of flexor, amazing slider, and he can check in 3D. So, the man is 6 to light skinned it. Got this wavy finger wave or this wavy type hairdo, and he made his own uniforms. And they wasn't cheap. His stuff was immaculate. He wears these orange glasses, bro, these, these, these tan glasses, and he got the tan shoes to match. So when he stepped on the floor, he could just stand there, boom. And everybody's looking like, and the girls are going crazy. <laughs> so you know what happens when the girls go crazy? You got two things going to happen. Dudes either going to get jealous or dudes are going to jock. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the ones that was jocking. I was like, <laughs> Oh my God. That's and crazy. then people were tapping me, turning my bro, get him. 
Turn him out, bro. I'm like, no. He's just a master. You don't walk out on no master, bro. You respect that. Respect that. If he called me out, different battle. That was me. And then, you know, his showmanship, he had already had this on. There's no reason for me to try to steal that shot. He already had this on. Then you had Captain Crunch, Charles, Steve. Um, now, what was it like when they were getting down? Now, because I know they, they was real fast when they hit because they had that locking in them. And, and to me, my opinion, they were more on the side of locking versus hitting, right? They, they, were, they were lockers. They were dancers, but they could pop. And in the pop that they did, they had their own little signature moves that you never saw before. Steve, you know, he'll go up in this, boom, turn his head like that, and he'll throw his arms this way, and then as his head's coming back this way, his legs are going around his body this way. Yeah. And then when he comes around, it's like, bam, and you just go, ooh, that's different. I never saw that before. Hmm. Charles had a way of moving. He was smooth, graceful. He was blessed. You can tell when someone got talent. You can tell when someone has a gift. Charles had the gift. Anthony King had the gift. Bob and Andre had the gift. I don't care if you had to work on it. Because I'm going to tell you, no, man, I had to work on my gift. Okay, well, look at you now. You had the gift. So there was a lot of amazing poppers that had the gift, bro. Hurdle. That's another one that people don't really talk about, man. That dude is phenomenal. Hurdle? My boy Hurdle, he's phenomenal. Now, he's from the L.A. area, right? Yeah, Hurdle's from the L.A. You need to get him on the show, bro. He's, he's, he's a beautiful person, man. In fact, I think he's a pastor, bro. If I'm not mistaken, he's a pastor, you know. And But his skills, he showed me something he's cool. know, not too long ago. We had a couple and of I'll phone just, conversations. He's cool, that, dude. I, I knew where that element or that, that, uh, that, um, that, uh, that recipe comes from. I knew where it come from. It has a robot prince element to it. it so was he doing that style back it. then? The style that I see today? Because he's in the animation. Yes. He was moving like that back then? Yeah. Yeah, he was Ooh. hard, bro. He was hard. I'm telling you, if you're going if you're gonna go on the popper side, I can tell you all the baddest poppers. If you go on the popper side, I can tell you all the baddest poppers. All I need to know is who was the baddest popper and who was the baddest locker so that I can battle that person and don't have to worry about going through all these other guys that you talk. Tell me five dudes person. that impressed you. Anthony King impressed me. Talking Pete impressed me. Still does. I'm going to save him for last. Triplet impressed me. Bob and Andre impressed me. But the hardest dude I've ever seen in my life, outside of myself. Y'all listen to this very carefully. Oh, Ticket Larry. Ticket Larry. <laughs> Ticket Larry. Yamo impressed me. See, there's so many, bro. There's some robot prints impressed me. Uh, Hurdle impressed me. There's so many. You know, um, but that number one dude, that one dude, Star Anthony Starchild. I've never seen waves like that outside of myself, and I was mad because I thought that I had created the way to maneuver the way. I thought I had bought it to to that 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 point of element, 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 like in here when your shoulder rolls up in here like that before the wave even come out. And he was doing them. And I got mad because I was looking at him and I was like, how did he learn to do that? That comes from me. When I learned to do waves, bro, even to this day, I got amazing waves. I would use my wave kit just to battle a dude that was super hard. Never popped on him, nothing. Just came out and just did my waves on him. And he backed off. You know what I mean? Who, who, who do you know battled Star, Star Child? Child? Incredible. Who do you uh, know, who do you know that battled Star Child? Yours truly. This was a man that saw me get out and got pissed off. And this is another person who I saw. He's another person who I saw and got pissed off. 
I got pissed off because he popped like me. He got pissed off because I'm better than him. I didn't see it, but he saw it, and everybody around me saw it. Oh, he's dope, man, bad, but I think you can get him. Everybody would always say it in my ear, and my homeboys, you know, I didn't feed off of that. I fed off of my style against your style. Is it true? Is it authentic? Is it a warrior style? Can you battle me and beat me? Literally. Not just because you got tricks and like the crowd scheme when you hit the beat or, you know, no. We're talking about you throw tuts, I throw tuts. You throw waves, I throw waves. We're going style, style, move for move. And you journey into that area with that dancer and, and you can tell within your heart, if you're an honest dancer, just get him. Let me pull out some artillery so I can get him back. And that's what I did. Because I said that. Hey, man, this dude is amazing. Like, these inner tucks, these intertwined tucks like that, those those were being done by Star Child before they even got here. <laughs> before they even got here. You know what I'm saying? What city was Star Child from? From Compton, bro. And he ran with a few guys, man, Joseph and a few other dudes. Uh that popped as well, and it was it was good too. He was really a good dude, man. The guy called me out. We all showed up at Bateman Hall, went head up. He had like twenty people with him, and I had the school behind me. And everybody was looking like this. Damn. Damn. <laughs> it was like even. Until I threw that tuck drop on his ass. Whole entire school went up in a rage. Whole school. And then when I came down from the tuck drop, I knee slided on him. And he was so pissed off, bro. This dude was my enemy. Is he with us? Is he with us today or is he rest in peace? Rest in peace. Let's give him let's give him five seconds. Five, four. Three, two, one. Pop lock and peace to Star Child, man. Absolutely. So what I did was I said, you know what? You got family on that side of the country. I got family on this side of that world. I don't really want this war to come to that over no damn pop lock, and it's not worth it. So I had a, a friend of mine, actually my cousin, who's real type of took <laughs> They like, they like type. This was when Tookie was here. Because I stayed in Linwood. Tookie stayed on El Segundo in the Red House, right? And he knew me from Papa. So he gave me total respect. Anybody mess with you, little homie, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's how the audio OGs OG did you, right? So I told him he had to talk to such and such. This dude knocks on my door, and it's Anthony Starchild. Apologizing to me. Mm. He wants to join my group. The group members was not with it. But then I said, I tell you what, you can bust with us at the next high school event that we do. What was the name of but your group? The name of our group was the Starlight Dancers. We are the original Starlights from L.A. First, we were the Bionic Boogie Brothers. Then we became the Electrophonics. And then we became the Starlight Dancers. Who was the Starlight, crew? Starlight, as you can see, took us more into Hollywood. That's when we started climbing and going on tour and stuff like that. Who was the crew members? Kevin Cole. Kevin Cole, Eric Epps, Terry Williams, uh, Clinton Howard, Eric, uh, one on Bandit. Kevin, Eric, Clint, Terry. Terry uh, Williams. Bandit. Yes. Is that um? Is that the cat that's that's going around on tour to different countries and stuff now? No. Okay. No. Terry was more of one of our stand-ins. Okay. He, he was one of the guys that was always in the garage watching our routines. Yeah. So he learned everything about it. So when one person can show up, Terry stands in. Okay. Follow me. Okay. And Eric Gaps, rest his soul. You know, he's gone. That was, that was Skeeter Rabbit's protege. Okay. Hey, I got a question for you, man. And rest I, in peace, Eric. Name a youngster that you've seen today. You know, the new generation that you feel has taken your moves. That's a deep one. Uh, 
You s- I saw Green Tech do my tech drop. I saw Green Tech do my knee slides. Um, now, is he is he biting off of me? I I have no idea, but that move is it belongs to the one arm band. It was created by me, you know. So well, if I see are you willing? It, new, are you willing to that? do this? Are you willing to demonstrate right now? Not not fully physical, but stand up right. and demonstrate how your tut drop is how your tut drop is done. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see me. Yeah, you could. Okay, so as I'm hitting and I'm coming to these different waves like this, I'll come up and I'll throw a wave out. I'll throw a wave up as my body launches up. It comes down to the side. My leg hits here and it comes up in the ear here. And I catch it on the shoulder, right there on the bottom of my elbow. I catch my foot so it touches like that. So while this foot is up that way, I'm holding it with my elbow up here and then I drop to the floor. To your knee. So. I mean, it could be one of those things it like... Makes me feel, it makes Honestly, it makes me feel cheated. Mm. It makes me feel cheated as a dancer. Because so, you know you know what someone told me, and I'd be like, man, that's some bullshit. That's just a way for me to forgive that person. Someone told me it's the highest form of flattery. When someone bites your is, style. It's the highest form of flattery. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. If it's a tribute... If you know me, if you know me, you know. If you're giving the credit, you don't just go and steal somebody's move. Like you know, when I when I watch when I watch Green Tech get down, he reminds me a lot of myself. I watched him when he first started. He doesn't know me, but I, I watched him when he first started. 
I was when he first put up his first video, and I said, oh, "This guy, he's gonna get good. He's gonna get good." Then when I saw him later on, I said, "Okay, yeah, he's there. He's at that level." Then when I saw him again, I said, "Okay, he's even getting better." He doesn't need any of our moves to be a great, great hitter. Same with Slim Boogie. The same with Jay Smooth and um, MT Pop. That's another one. You know, he has a strutting style, a Fillmore style, but he has a lot of great touches and moves like that. But when I see him get down, he reminds me a lot of myself because he knows how to ride the beat. Even though they don't hit like me, I hit to all the beats. I'm going to hit to every beat. They kind of like have this thing. It's an upper body hit, but the legs are not really like carrying that bottom that bottom uh, roots, you know, the roots mm-hmm. of, the, of the tree. They're not really shaking the limbs up here. It's just that's their technique. And I see it in a lot of people that, that came out of the Boogaloo era and that are heading into the pop era. So... Not to take anything from them, bro, but I think that, you know, that a lot of them was doing my stuff. Okay. Now, if you say, that, I'm like, if you're throwing away stuff, that nobody owns that. You can't put a marketing project on that. You can't copyright that. They're waves. They come from all different directions. It might look like you're waves, but it's like, but if I go, if I do this, <laughs> and make the noise, yeah. and everybody goes, oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's my move. That's you. Now, if I see another popper go boom, cack, and go, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> that's my move, bro. Right, come on. Come on. But it's the new generation. They hey. don't really worry about that. What they see, they do. And they advance it or they, they, they keep it to where it's at. So it's no, it's no respect lost for. for One arm um, bandit. You have you know. battled a lot of people, right? A lot of poppers. Say you, again? You have, you have battled a lot of poppers. Lots. You're, you're, you're known. For going after him, looking for him. Yes. Tell me one person that you know till today that ducked and dodged you and you couldn't catch up with him. Who is it that you wanted to battle that you couldn't catch up with? Which one? Not Blue City, Heckle and Jekyll. Not Carson. Not the LA. Samoans. L.A. The two, the two white guys. Um, I had heard about them, and I kept hearing Heckle and Jekyll. And like, oh, no, no, not them. This one in L.A. <clears throat> and I said, you know what? I got to get these guys. But I can never find these guys. You hear me? They didn't. They wasn't out on the scene like that. They were in L.A., East L.A., doing their thing over there and going to different places and stuff like that. So I never really got to to get at them. Um, but once I saw Heckle, hello. That's how I am, bro. I battle you, and then we can like go get a burger, bro. Let's go get some meat. Let's smoke. Let's 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 go get a drink. It's whatever. Cause my style is is domineering. It needs to be penetratable. And it can't get penetrated by me. So I need to I need to push it out and penetrate other people's styles. Where'd you learn from? Where's the origin of that style? How did you come up with that formula? Who taught you that? What is the essence of that? How deep in the spirit do you go in your dancing? Do you actually like switch it off to a demonic side? Because mm. there is a demonic side to this dance. Mm. I'm telling you. Just I'm like telling you. just like singing. Yeah. It's these waves, bro. You go into these demonic waves, they go and, and next thing you know, when you go in there, your body literally transforms into this creature. I've done it hundreds of times. But then I started realizing there's something else going on here that I need to make sure this is pure. I didn't want to be on the demonic side, bro. Like, just moving like a creature, bro. To, you know, so I learned that my gift does come from the most high. So that's why I left it. I respect the most high. And I stay away from the areas of the dark side. And some 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 dancers that have that zone where the whole crowd go crazy and even they don't realize what they're doing. There's something entity or something is giving them this this extra endorphins bro and it's not them it's something before <laughs> we were born i'm telling that's you that's crazy there. to become the best you got to go to training and then when you train you got to train like you in the military and then after you finish training you go through body mass and 
and uh, working out, and then you go through the foods you eat, and then you go through the meditation of the dance, and then you go through the history of the dance, and now you're a master of the dance. You know what I mean? But we're all still students. Even though you master that craft, you're still students. Like when I see Brooklyn mm-hmm. Shrimp, Shrimp is still a student. He knows he's still a student. You know what I mean? Because we're getting older. We can't do all those stuff that we used to do. There's no cameras around. Because if y'all hadn't seen it, y'all would have understood it. You got to remember, what you saw the Boogaloo's do on Soul Train was what? 75, 76, 78. 78 or 79. Yeah, they came on 79. <clears throat> when they came on, the, then you saw them. All you saw was the replication of a Boogaloo routine. You didn't see them when they got on their street clothes. You didn't see them when they had on their street clothes. The one our band did. They was freaking amazing, bro. Mm. They were amazing. You know, and they don't do half the stuff they do today. We're older. We can't be squatting on, <clears> snaking all down. I mean, I still do. <laughs> you know, going into these areas is, is a very dangerous place to be, man. Hey, I want to put and this out. I want to put this out there. I want to say, I want to say this real quick. So you had asked me a question earlier. Just can't talk. So you had asked me, like, who is the baddest in Eve at the Dark at the time? Yeah. Bro, when Bob and Andre came... He held it down. When Anthony King came, he held it down. When the Cosmic Space Poppers came, they held it down. Okay, so and everybody had their moment. Everybody had their moment in their zone. But now here comes the contest. First one, Anthony King wins. Was I there? Yes. Did I get in it? No, I did not. Because he had his group and I didn't have my group. It was group contest. It was the it was Electric Puppet. It was, it was, it was one of Prince. No, no, no. Electric Puppet. It was uh, Captain Crunch's Funky Bunch. It was uh, uh, Cosmic Space Poppers. That was the three finalists. And Anthony King and them won. Cosmic took second. And what about, I mean, um, who were the crew members in Cosmic? No, no, excuse me. Captain Crunch won the first one. See, they had them every week. They had them every week. Who was the crew members in the Cosmo Space Poppers? uh, Steve. Joseph, Kiki, not Darren, his name is, uh, uh, starts with a D, Kevin, uh, uh, Darnell, Steve, Kevin, I mean, excuse Steve, uh, Kiki, Joe, and Darnell. So in that Those battle. Those four dudes, unstoppable, period. If well, they get in the competition, they're going to win it. But they were in that competition and they lost, right? They lost to Anthony King. Mm-hmm. So were they doing group routines? They was, yes, yes, they was doing their routine. Cosmics was amazing, man. Can you remember yeah, who you was with Anthony King, King that King? night? Say again? Can you remember who was with Anthony King that night? Yes. So it was Anthony King, the Electric Puppets, his name is group, Anthony King, Boogaloo Tep, which is great. Poppin' Pete, not Poppin' Pete from Electric Boogaloo, but a dude in their group was named Poppin' Pete, and Creepin' Cliff. Each one of them had their own styles. You battle this one, you better have some hell of a touch. I'm just telling you right now. He touch like this and fall all the way back into a way to the floor, all the way back while he's touch. All the way back, hit the floor, a snake in, and come up one. And I mean, elevate like this, y'all, up. To like his body, like somebody's pulling him up. These were amazing dudes. Creeping Cliff was another one that looked like triplet to me. The I used to see started. him a lot, man, as a kid. Hmm? Creeping Cliff, I saw him a lot as a kid, man. He was bad, bro. They were bad, bro. One on one, you're gonna pop for your life. I promise you. He hit I hard. Promise you. I promise you. Even today, if I take one of these new school kids and put them with them, to, like in my mind. Like where they was at right there on that moment in the zone, and I take one of these new school kids to put them there, they're gonna be fighting for their lifetime to fight that battle. You follow me? Yeah. It was that serious. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, during that time, man, was there like a, I don't wanna use the word beef, but like a competition between LA and Compton? No disrespect to L.A. L.A. couldn't see Compton. L.A. couldn't see Long Beach. This was the birth. These were the birthplaces of this style. You know who confessed to that? Who? 
Big Deuce. Another amazing dude, man. Another Big Deuce me, me gave and him, me and him went head up. That's mm. how we met. Big Deuce yeah, give a lot of whole props whole to Compton. Bunch of gangster dudes with me. One of them yelled out, hey, "You better not lose neither, nigga." <laughs> Wait a minute, who who said that to who? One of the dudes in Deuce's crew said that to to Deuce. Yeah, Deuce was riding with some real niggas. Y'all you know, know. What I mean? yeah. Yeah, bro. So one of the dudes yelled out, "Hey, bro, and hey, you better not lose." To me, he said that to me. Get ready to battle Deuce. Before I could battle Deuce, I had to battle Peanut. Before I could battle Peanut, I had to battle the Outsiders. Who were the Outsiders? It was the group that belonged to the Time Bandits, but I guess they messed up, so they kicked them yeah, out. Yeah, you talking about the Peanut from Long Beach, right? <laughs> no, no story. Uh, you talking about the you talking about the Peanut from Long Beach? Yeah. Okay. So then, and this was all right in front of Grand Central Station, bro. They ran that club. They ran that. When they when are they coming? They come at eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock at night. That's when they show up, when all, as soon as they walk up, all the women in line and everybody in front is screaming. They ain't got in the club yet. And I said, I got to battle these dudes. Oh, no, they get just too much press. And it was all pretty boys. Pretty boys meaning like, you know, not like Michael Jackson pretty. I'm talking about they was handsome men. They, they had the girls going crazy. Jamal Jericho, especially John Pierre. Dude had a float like them, them dudes are floating today, bro. He had that float. You know what I mean? These dudes were sick, scully, skeleton, robot, uh, bopping, uh, 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 bopping Ron, freaking, um, 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 handicap. I mean, what's it? Wheel wheelchair man. Shoes in a wheelchair, hitting, ticking, 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 So grab his drink. Ticking, 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 ticking. Yeah. You and Deuce had a one-on-one -on -one head up. Yeah. Come on. Tell me. When I got to Deuce, to me, I was so advanced in my style that I kind of knew where his style come from. I knew the origin of what he was doing to me. The arm over, the falling, the chest up, you know, the coming down twice with the head like that before you move to the next move. You know, I have one. Boogaloo's have one. Double it up like this from Long Beach, that comes from Cobra, them snake people. That's that snake style. That's all that crane and snake and cobra and all that mongoose. But uh, Daryl's group, the mysterious, I saw them. I called them out. I went to the backyard in their practice and called them out. And he told me, hey, bro, we rehearsing right now. But I would love to battle you right now, but we got to rehearse it. I didn't care, bro. I started hitting on them. Disrespected them. Sorry. Disrespected them. And they looked. And they were like, yo, we need him on our squad. And let me get your number, homie. Let me, let, me, let me get back with you. This is Deuce. Yeah. Yeah, this was the mysterious poppers from Long Beach. King Cobra, Python, King Python, them. They was in the backyard of Paxi one time, and I came back there with a friend of mine and brought me back. Okay. There. You know, I used to run with Baby New York and all of them. They was part of my squad. Sal, Sally B. Y'all know what's up. What's up, Sal? You know what I mean? But it was like a lot of poppers, man. A lot of poppers that the world don't know nothing about, man. These dudes was incredible. Have you or ever went up against Pop and Taco? Amazing. Have I ever went up against Taco? I'll tell you a story. So we're at the Whiskey Go Go in Hollywood. I got my student with me. And this is, his name is Turbulent. Dooney, they call him Dooney, but I named him Turbulent. The reason why I named him Turbulent is because he starts a bunch of controversy when he pops. He goes against anybody. He don't care who it is. We walk in. It's Jazzy, Renee, Jazzy, Renee, Hugo, Bruno, Terry, Bixer. I think his name is Bixer. Um, and uh, Anthony. Anthony. So they're in a, they have a group. And they're like hard to beat. <laughs> you talking about some messes, some blacks together? They hard to, and a white boy. They hard to beat. My student came out on them, <laughs> laying them three D moves and five D on them that I taught him. And bro, they backed up and Hugo came out. Now, now he wasn't whack. He was amazing. Like I'm gonna, I'm ask how did you call me out? It was like a kung fu thing. Then my student came back, boom, cap, tell the truth, 
interesting time because at that time a lot of people wasn't a lot of people fell off by then right this was one of the b-boy summits that they had uh i'm gonna say i'm gonna say this is probably the one with ski where we get a tribute to ski also also it wasn't in the 90s maybe the 2000s yeah Maybe, maybe, maybe it was in uh, two, two or four, or six. Oh, two. Okay, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in there. I don't remember. That's the different. Because I went to all a lot of them, so I don't remember each. Day a lot of people started months. coming back hitting in the early two thousands. Right. In the mid nineties. So anyway, so I come out now. I got major respect for Wiggles, bro, because I watched Wiggles. You know, like he, I'm a fan of his. Like I watch him grow. You know, I watch his okay. TV. I mean, he's producing a music studio, and I'm doing my beats in the studio, and I'm watching him, and I'm like, yo, you know, and I, it was that vibe. He didn't know about it, but I did, because I keep in touch with everybody, right? I'm vibing off of you, and you don't even know I'm vibing off of you. So, make a long story short. So, I come out, man, I lean, boom, 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 and in my mind, I'm like, okay, get your zone. Where's your zone at? Where's your zone? And all of a sudden, this dude pops out. They expect it, didn't, didn't think, and I look at his wiggles. So, I back up, and I look right at him. And he doesn't make eye contact with him, but he's getting down. Then he does like 30 seconds or something, and then he backs up. And when he backs up, I'm thinking in my mind, like, I look, I always look around and see what people are going to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if they're looking at me, that means he's calling me out. And then he backs up, and I go, and then he walks away. And then I go, bro, it doesn't look like a suit. Oh, bro, he's just getting down. So he don't even, he probably won't even remember that, but I remember that. So I never got, I never called Wiggles out. I, I, I okay. don't need to call out. So that leads me to a question I was going to ask you anyway. Is there anyone that's in denial about you guys having a battle? Oh, yeah, a lot of them. They're not in denial. They know, but they don't want me to broadcast because they're Come not going to love for them. Tell me somebody. Out of million battles. You and Mr. Animation ever go at it? Yeah, I called him out directly. Ben Knight was there. Called him up, came up, everybody scared about it. No, man, don't do that, man. He's going to bear the shit out of you, bro. He won the beat. He won the beat. Not today. <laughs> That's what I said. Not today. And I walked over there, and I said, uh, I said, uh, what's wrong with this animation? They said, one is holding down the crowd right there. And I whistled real loud. What? what? And he turned around, and I started just coming at him. Boom, snake and poop, poop, and I'm looking at him. Waves going through my body, and I'm in my mind now. I'm like, boom, 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 and I'm in the zone. Bro, he looks right at me, walks off his show, walks down to the fence, and goes, what's going on, back? What's up, dog? What's up, baby? What's up? Manhandles me. <laughs> I'm just standing there like a little puppy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, he's a strong, yeah, he's a strong, well-fit dude. Fit, dude. Bro, total respect. I am. He works for his, for his grandfather, Mr. Dooley. Me and him was like, me, animation became like that. Especially with my student, you know, because these floor moves that you see, a lot of these floor moves come from the creation of me. Not to brag about nothing again. I was doing floor moves back in the freaking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Animation ran tough with Chuko and Mr. Reed. There you go. Chuko, Chuko has a lot of floor moves. Oh, yeah. And you know why? Because him and my student were like that. Okay. Now, Chuko, don't get me wrong, Chuko didn't develop his full moves from me, but he was a, he has a lot of influence from my student from me. 
and he always respected that. But Chuko advanced a lot of his role moves too. He didn't just like look at him because I can tell when somebody's got something that belongs to him. I can tell by the way you execute. There's a certain way you got to practice to get that move that that way. You have to put in that work. But nowadays, you know, they can see it and probably grab it. But back then, you had to put in the work because we were creating. Follow me. Yeah. Hey man, you uh, have a video that went viral. And you oh, were wow. at the Poppers Ball. Wow. Yeah. Now, what it I love about viral. those type of viral. videos, what I love about the video is you're in a zone and the intent wasn't for a video to go viral. Not at all. It was just a true throwdown. You was yeah. in, in, in your in your zone bussing. Yeah. I only had a certain amount of seconds, so I just did like three power moves. Yeah. Tell me the effect that you had after that video going viral. Shock. Total shock because I couldn't be a part of the payment. How many, how many, what was the number on it? Uh, when I first saw this video, it was at 89,000. And I was like, dang, 89,000 people looking at that video? Like, dang, it must be the title. You know, old man getting down or something they put up there. You didn't and even know, right? Night didn't night somebody night? call you? Yeah. Midnight called me. Okay. And I was like, hey, boy, have you seen the video? I go, yeah, I saw it. It's pretty cool, man. I said, it's got 89,000 views. And I was excited. recorded that video bandit hmm? who recorded that video uh, it was done by uh, a young lady that was there she took it to a guy who's quote unquote wealthy and he's supposed to be uh, an African dude and he put it up on his site and he had something like 10 million followers or something like that Mm. And he put it up on his site, and it just took off from there. So, what we, of course, we did our little homework and stuff to see what we can get off of it and stuff. But, nah, first we release it. Plus, you know, it was fair game. There's cameras everywhere. Nobody held the cameras back. That's always been my thing. Turn off the cameras, bro, and I get down. <laughs> That's always been my thing, bro. That's Turn off the song. cameras, man. It was, I, I ran into this group years back, man. It, it was some Chinese guys from China, and it was like, Bowing to me and stuff. When I bend it, when I bend it, oh my god, when I bend it. Yeah. And I look at it, they all start crowding around me. I'm like, like how y'all know me? The video, the video in China. I bought the video. You bought the video. What do you mean you bought this? Is in 2000. You bought a video of me? Yes, the American Sweet Dance Championship. You won that. I bought the video. Bought the video? They selling that? That's crazy. I didn't even know that. And I'm supposed to be a businessman. Oh. What's going on here? <laughs> Let it be man. what it is. <laughs> hey, man, tell me about the tours you've been on. Um, I toured with uh, NWA. Really? Yes. I toured with Lonzo with NWA, bro. Toured That's with deep. Them. Now, I thought I'd been on tour with some rappers. You yeah, toured man, with was, NWA? It crazy, bro. It was crazy, bro, because for one thing, you couldn't get into, how do you say it? You couldn't get into the building because of the women. And you couldn't get out of the building because of the guys. <laughs> you feel Shit. me? It was like that. 
How long did you the, How long did you tour? Like, oh, no, I can't do this. I just did Texas. We did Texas. And I said, oh, I can't do this. Really? Yeah, bro. That's another, another story, you know what I mean? I don't want to put that out there like that. But, yeah, it was like that, bro. You know, there was love, but a lot of thugs and gangsters, you know, they like that. I've toured with gangsters. I see the outcome. Look in the audience, you can see they, <laughs> they put out guns and they wait till they get off the stage. Not to me, not to the dancers, but to the audience. And you're like, oh no, I don't want to die. I want to die. So, I'm a kid. I'm going to get on my boat and go. You know, <laughs> like it. But <laughs> my biggest tour was with Alfred Anderson. Alfred was saw me at this club at, uh, I had just won another competition. Uh, oh, in fact, Bruno was in this competition with Hugo, and Bruno, Hugo, and was the third guy. I can see a face. I, I want to say it's Jazzy. It was the uh, the it was a guy that did a song called Nineteen, then Nineteen, Paul Carcastle, and he was. I mean, he moved to every single beat. Every single beat. He was in it. Hugo Suave. Hugo Suave was with them. That's who the guy was. It was a jazz. It was Hugo Suave. And uh, it was a bunch of dudes. The, the rubber band man was there. The original white dude. The rubber band man. Damon Frost? He was there. Huh? Which rubber band man? The white guy. Okay, the white guy. Yeah, he's an older guy. I just, I, just, I just recently saw him at another show that I just performed at in Anaheim for Deputy and the Lockers. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so it was at uh, El Paso Cantina. One on Bandit won that. One on Bandit walked away with that money. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And uh, and so I just wanted to bring that to your attention that that maybe that could be leeway into the like, idea. Yeah, me and Bruno kind of had a little yeah. something, something, but we didn't. But I did beat I did beat Flip Rock because I knew you had him on a show. It was Flip Rock, Oz. And, and, and Sugar Pop at the three two one club. It was me, Robot Durrell, and Kendall. Who was Flip Rock? You said I have Flip Rock on the show. Yeah, is it Flip Rock or uh, no, um, Mr. Wave? Oh, Mr. Wave. Yeah, Mr. Wave. So, yeah, so it's Flip Rock, Oz, Rock, and Sugar Pop. Three two one club, Hollywood. We won. We won a trip to Hawaii. We won a VCR. Five hundred dollars, the whole shebang. VCRs was the bomb back in the day. Yeah, bro, that that was where it was at, man. And this was like in eighty seven, eighty five, eighty six. Because I think we did the movie in eighty two or eighty four. Like you started pop locking in seventy five. Yeah. And you started robotting in seventy two. That's beautiful, homie. This is the year of 2022. And God sustained me all these years. I still tumble. I still break dance. All of that. Roller skate. I seen you. We were skating together. <laughs> oh, I'm doing You see that. In hey. Fact, you know what? If I had my skates before, I would have shown them to you. So, so from 72 to 2022, man, what are you still doing with the dance today, homie? I am doing guest appearances. Um... I'm doing a lot of uh, judging, judging shows, you know, as long as that is right, y'all, because y'all ain't going to just have me up there getting in trouble. Well, well you judge mine, uh, right? Yeah, but you don't. Know, <laughs> right. You ain't got to worry about that. Yeah, I judge yours, um, two of yours, in fact. I just two, two of you. But in August, uh, August 20th and 21st, is going to be a big buzz in Los Angeles, around the world for uh, Street Dance Roots. They're getting ready to put on a huge popping event. It's, it's the whole nine. You vote online, who's your favorite popper? Who's your favorite dancer? Who's your favorite hip hop artist? Who's, who's giving that? Popper, whacker. This is coming up this year. Who's giving it though? Who's your favorite? Huh? Who's giving that? Uh, uh, Alpha. You already got passes in, your VIP status. Okay. Yeah, they talked about that already. So you, that's the. So go I'm one of the judges. I'm one of the panel members on, on there, you know. So it was a call for all Los Angeles to get involved in it, but we, it was hard to get people from LA to come 
and, and, and give their time. You know, it's all online. All the people dance the same, man. Scorpio, I told you, you know, come through, bro. Like, really look this up, man. I'm Who's coming, homie. Pop, they want to know. Hey, you leaving out something, though. Those are the things. Those are the things that you're doing today with the dance, but you left out something. What's that? Aren't you doing some acting? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm starting in a, a feature film with Cool Boy, <laughs> uh, the director. What should the tell me? Tell me your role. Dance. Tell me your role, man. Without giving my up the whole role, movie, my tell me your role. Is banded. I'm a uh, I'm a dancer. Uh, I work at a hydraulic shop, bro, and I, I just can't seem to get it right, bro, because cars are backing up, and the reason why is because we're playing. We're dancing all on the job. Boss found out all this information, man, had a, called us into a meeting, man, and the story unfolds from that point on. It's pretty dope, man. It's a lot of fun, huh? It was amazing, man. I'm, I'm waiting for part two. <laughs> tell them, tell, tell, go ahead and tell the viewers who all your mechanic homies were in the hydraulic shop. Again, tell tell my tell the you viewers who is all who is all involved. Yeah. Okay, so it's me, one arm bandit. It's first rock, homie. Mexican homie was killing it, y'all. <laughs> um, it's Poppin' Pete from the Electric Blues. Uh, it's Cool Boy, and it's Bob and Andre. Ooh. Now that's a, that's like a real deep, like put together because you got the one arm bandit. You got Pop and Pete, and you got um, Cool Boy, and you got um, uh, Pop and Andre, all from the same hood, pretty much. Man, you know that's I mean? like, you know, when I hear that, that's like saying you got Michael Jordan, LeBron <laughs> yeah. James, Magic yeah. Johnson, yeah. Iceman, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dominique Wilkins. It's <laughs> like, man. That's crazy. Hey, you know what that's I want to tell you, man? Um, and this is some deep. This is real deep, and this is real talk. And I like giving people their credit, homie. And I think you deserve your props. And I'm going to do it right here on Pop Lock Talk. Because what you've done oh. is a beautiful thing. And I hope it's a good example for other people to do this as well. I'm not going to say you squashed a beef. Well, you kind of did squash a beef. But you brought two people together who was needed to be together as friends. Now, without you, we buddies. And it, but it's because of you. Because I have a respect for you. It was a mutual respect thing. And they have that person has respect for you. And you talk to both sides, clear things up. And now me and this person has come together. And I think because me and him coming together, it's changing the mentality and the mindset of a lot of other people. And I'm explaining this situation the best way I can without saying this person's name right away. Right. But, uh, and I think you know where I'm going with this. I, so, I think so. This is my way, homie, in front of everybody, is to say thank you because you cleared something up and it was time anyway for things to make a change. And we have to do that, man. It's in our nature, bro. Like, I'm from the hood, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I saw the bullets flying every day going to school. I saw it. You know, I'm not going to say what I saw, but I saw it. I was there. I, I know who the gangsters are, the thugs, the ones that run the street, the ones with the lowriders. And that's how I designed that, that move called the lowrider from riding with the professionals. But the other Cooter and Bruce, what's up, y'all? Yeah, so, so, people that ain't never gave you your props on anything and never gave you your credit. I am right in front of everybody right now on Pop Lock Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's because of the one-armed bandit that Cool Boy and Pop and Pete are homies till today. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. And it's not just you, man. I mean, like, if we go to the event, bro, we don't need to be flexing, man. There's fans out there, bro. I'm trying to do this for the kids, bro. I'm mm. trying to get my information, my history out. Y'all come up and talk to me. Come talk to one of them that you see me at the pop picnic. You see me at these events. Come holler at your boy. I'm the one that has a lot of information. Not saying the other guys don't. It's just I'm a history buff. That's what I do. So well, let's come do, holler at me, bro. I'm, I'm let's do this, Bandit. I do this uh, to a lot of... I ask this question a lot to people on Pop Lock Talk. Uh, tell everyone something about you 
where you think you might be misunderstood. What, did it, what is it that you would like to clear up or just express? I think I would say that uh, one time some one of these, these kids came to me, man, and he's like, he came up and he was like, oh, what's up, going on, man? And I was like, hey, what's up, man? And he said, man, I've been watching you my whole life, bro. And he kind of did it sarcastically, like, and I was like, oh, that's cool, bro, that's cool. He goes, yeah, bro, because back in the day, you was unapproachable, bro. You was on a what? And that's when he got, he said I was unapproachable. Oh. And that's when he got my attention. I was like, what? I'm unapproachable. He goes, yeah, homies. You had all your homeboys all the way, always around you, bro. And you just looked like you was mad all the time, bro. <laughs> I was looking at him like, me? Like, you sure you got the right guy? He goes, yeah, do you want to bet a little right in there? I said, oh, okay. That, that shook me. Shook me to my core, bro. And I said, I don't want anybody to ever think that of me. I am not that guy. It's just I'm, I'm raised in an environment where you go out and you step out. You got to stand up like this. You can't be sitting there just smiling all, be hanging you know. You got to be like, yo, what's up? Hey, man, what's up? Man? What's up, bro? Oh, what's up, dog? You know, you got to be on your grind like that. You know, I get that us. all the time, Bandit. Yeah, bro, they misunderstand. I've been getting that for years. They misunderstand the culture of who we are opposed to who we are. We're really nice people. We're not walking around with, you know, trying to take somebody's head off. We don't roll like that, man. We, we just we just don't, man. You know, and I want them to know that, you know, I love the Lord, man. I'm a biblical studier, man. I'm a historical a studier in the scriptures. That's what's up. That's homie. real talk. I put, I put Christ first, man, beyond right anything. Most high rises on my part because he showed me an avenue in my life. Where I, oh, I've got to tell you, I, I did do the Nike tour, too, with Alpha. That's what I was alluding to. We went to a Nike tour, and that was amazing. It was amazing. I made so much money. Um, uh, it just, I'm blessed. I don't have no complaints, man. Hey, and man, are those Hot Wheels back there in the back? Yeah, this is the uh, graffiti, graffiti version. It's this special <laughs> uh, edition. You're a special collector. Edition. Oh, that one's dope, too. Yeah, they, they, these are, I get these to my, uh, my son. He's... Uh, you know, when my days are over, my son claims everything. My boat, full blown studio. All my, I have, a, I have a, another studio where I have uh, nothing but action, action figures. Super duper. Action How old is your baby figures. right now, man? Hmm. How old is your baby? How old is your baby boy? Oh uh, man, he'll be uh, four in June 13, man. It's three and a half. You know, I've never introduced him to the world, ever. He even has. All right, we wrote a book. Uh, about him, and the book just came in today. It's a, it's a book about him. <laughs> He's on the front cover. It's a children's book, man. It's it's, it's incredible. But uh, yeah, so that's my that's my secret weapon. I don't think a lot of people know, man, that you produce music. Oh uh, yeah, I've uh, been in the game for producing music for a long time. Uh, I've got quite a few people signed. They're actually richer than I am. <laughs> I'm rich in spirit. They're rich in cash, you know. Um. Yeah, they went on to become very, very successful rappers and singers, you know. And I got them to start, you know. So, I, I mean, I listened to my documentary about who I, I worked with. I've met Michael, you know, I've been to his house, got pictures of all that stuff. I even got some, I even got some, some trinkets that, that he gave me. Throw my, throw my jacket in, in the next room, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what you, you know what you're known for, homie? And not just you. But you, <laughs> why, why are you laughing? <laughs> you, Bop and Andre, who else? No Bone Tyrone, who else? No bone, all, no all, all, the, all the OGs that's older than me, all y'all, after my events, you guys are known for being outside. <laughs> <laughs> you already know where I'm going Bobby with this. Y'all be back to Bobby reminiscing, history. talking history, and going at each other's throats. We no, God damn it. It was 1982. I remember clearly. No, shut up, bandit. No, Dre, shut the fuck. No, look here, homie. Y'all well, y'all be out there going at it. We have to, man, because I did a documentary. And I talked to some of the hottest dudes on the planet, from the Bay to, you know, to here. And a lot of information, bro, when I got ready to release it, and I had it fact-checked by a lawyer, 
He came back, man, with a list of stuff that wasn't true. It wasn't true. Like, you said you created this and you didn't. And then he shows me a video in the archives. And, like, this is the guy who did that. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, wow. You know who had the number one archives for who? dancers? Who? Michael Jackson. Hmm. Michael Jackson. You know? And um, Wade Robinson, in fact, I called him out in Palm Springs because I, I thought he was a little cocky, a little arrogant, a little bit, right? So I called him out in Palm Springs, but he came on none. I love and doing Wade that. You know who I Corey bust on? You know who I mm -hmm. bust on? You know who I threw down on? Who? Because he was cocky and he had on the back of his jacket. And this was at uh, IDA. Don't say Chris Brown. Close. This was at uh, International Dance Academy. And he I'm had Marianne. King of Dance on the back of his jacket. Amarion. Amarion. I caught Amarion at the idea. I was coming out one of my rooms from teaching. And he was in the lobby. He had his little King of Dance jacket on. And I saw him. And I said, ba, ba, sta. And he just looked at me. And, <laughs> and he was scared. <laughs> he was being scary, man. You know, I guess he thought I was going to. Well, a lot of dancers are training dance. You know, they're trained. They're trained to do this. So, you know, we're not trained. We're born with this. Yeah. You know, but that's not taking that from Mario. Mario was getting the groove on, man. B2K and them, they was getting down, bro. Oh, they can dance their ass, ass off. Dudes, man. They can dance their ass off, but if you're going to put King yeah, to dance. I love all them dudes, bro. Who'd you I'm say? Like, one thing about me, one thing about me, when it comes to, to battles and, and styles, don't mess with mine, I'm going to mess with yours. I'm at that age now where I have to prove nothing. But don't mess with this over here. I got students that can get you. Not worried about you. But when it comes to artists that are trained, I respect that, bro. You get your money, you get your hustle on. Plus, you make good music that I like, so I'm straight. Does your style yeah. have a name? Huh? Does your style have a name? Bandit style. Bandit style. It consists of shadow boxing, stutter pop, 5D, and all soul. In here, send these things here, these two equipments. I'm so Stutter sorry. pop, I don't use in public. Shadow boxing, it's more like a, a it's not skeeter rather shadow boxing. You know, it's it's a different type of shadow boxing. It's more like me uh, chasing my shadow. If I can't see it, I gotta go find it. So when I turn it to the floor, I gotta see it. And stutter pop. Like I don't, like I said, I don't use that in public. That's my stuff. That's sway style. That's another style I have. This is sway style. It's real dope, man. It's Ooh. real dope. But I, I use that for my amusement, me and God's amusement. It's not something that I share with the public because when I'm in the zone, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, can't stop. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just bust. Hey. And I not, I'm not able to bust in front of the public because everything is always scheduled. Got me in the head, man. Got this. Hey, I'm finna hit you with something spontaneous, right off the top of your dome. Spontaneous, off the top of your dome. Give some shout outs to some pop lockers. I want to give a shout out to Hurdle, Pop and Andre. I want to give a shout out to Salt and Pepper from LA. They dope. Very dope. Very dope. Sean and Robert. Yeah. No Bones Tyrone. I want to give a shout out to Robot Girl, Kendall. S.B. Rufus, uh, um, 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 Captain Crunch and Funky Bunch, the Time Bandits, Mysterious Poppers, The Outsiders, Royal Flush, Unique Dominoes, uh, Blue City, um, Heckle and Jekyll, L.A. Boppin' Crew, Funny Bone Crew, uh, Electric Boogaloos, all the dudes from the Bay Area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, bro. I don't care what they say over here, what you heard over there. Bro, we love y'all, bro. For all that, Fillmore, and all that, you know, bro, we love y'all for that, bro. Without that, we wouldn't be doing what half the stuff we're doing now. No, that's so dope. That was the that was the that was a formula. That was the first this was drop in the water. That was the tree <clears throat> that that was the seed that planted that tree that made all them leaves fly off and go all over the world, bro. Thank hey, you. Appreciate you. Tell me about salt and pepper. Salt and Pepper uh, is from L.A. They hooked up with my student, Turbulent, and just fell in love with that style. You know, Dooney, Dooney would flip on you, man. He'd 
tick, 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 and then do a flip flop and then go into a split and come up, ticket, you know. The salt and pepper <clears throat> was a group that was heading to the top and kind of just like went their own separate ways. You know what I mean? Okay. Because we kind of like, I was going to take, take them under my wing, but then we kind of fell off. But they was dope. They still get out today. In fact, we, we just bust out of Denny's the other night in, uh, uh, I want to say Anaheim. <laughs> we was killing it, you know? People coming out, crowd around it and stuff, watching and stuff. We is, was getting down. Is there anything, man, that you want to accomplish with this dance that you haven't yet? Oh, man, I would love to produce a movie, bro. I would love to produce a movie. I wrote a script. Uh, I was going to pitch it to the Wayans Brothers at one time, but that's when he had told me, like, you know, copyright. And I said, no, I got to get a copyright. He said, well, you do that, and they pitched it to me. But I never pitched it. But, uh, yeah, I want to do a movie, man. I have this great idea for this movie. It would be just... Can I be in your movie, homie? This world. Huh? Can I be in your movie, homie? Oh, come on. That's not, not even a question. <laughs> bro, you you in my life, bro. That's oh, just right part, part of the way the game flow. I mean, you know, I should be in your movie, bro. You the one dancing with all the, all the stars, man. Well, you are in my I'm movie. look up you over some freaking star's house <laughs> just chilling. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, you are. Well, my, they all get at you. You are in my movie, man. Absolutely, I am. Yeah, I am. And there's a lot of dancers, man, that's out there. You know, uh, Touche, you know, from Landwood, uh, John Tate from Landwood, um, uh, Slick Dog, Slick Rick, uh, Slick from Pomona, uh, Tempo. I like his stuff, bro. Always have. Uh, there's just uh, so many that I could I, I could just sit here. And Tempo name said he's gonna come on Pop Lock Talk. I just got to get the right time and schedule and get that organized with him. Slick Dog, come on Pop Lock Talk. Sit down with Cool Boy, homie. We got a history together, man. Stop Absolutely. ducking and dodging me. Let's sit down. Let's chop it up, homeboy. <laughs> and there's something else that I do want to say too, to the new school. Listen, bro. I'm the one armed bandit, bro. I've been in this game longer than you can imagine, bro. Listen, when someone reaches out to you, bro, an OG or something, bro, don't be afraid to, to acknowledge them, bro. You know, hit them back. Because you never know, man. One minute you could be here, next minute you could be in tour making $50,000 a month. 50000 a month. Okay? Because this already, already, I already hit one of y'all. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I ain't going to mention your name on here. But I hit you up and I say, hey, bro, you know, why would you like to do this, 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 that? And you was like, bam, bam, bam. And you never responded back. Mm. You missed out on 50 G's tax free. Because I couldn't do the tour. I have, I have I have other stuff going on. But I couldn't do the tour, the tour but you could have had that 50000 But, again, you know, you guys, I'm hitting you up. Uh, Nelson from France, MP Pot, you know, um, I'm hitting y'all up. Tebow Chan, I see y'all. Slim, I hit you up. You know, reach back out to me, bro. Reach back out. Don't be That's afraid right. of us, bro. That's right. You know, we don't want nothing from you guys. We enjoy what you're doing. If we don't want but don't that. pass That's up an opportunity to go on tour, bro. Don't pass up an opportunity for someone to Talk recognize to him, you Bannon. with an award and you don't you don't get that award. Talk to him, Bannon. Hey, Bannon, I want to have some fun with you, man. Let's go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. You can't tap out. If you tap out, I'm going to call you a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Pick one or the other. Okay. Pitbull or Rottweiler? Rottweiler. Ooh. Why? Because it's bigger? Faithful. Ooh. It's faithful than more than a pet. I don't know what that pet that going to be. But <laughs> I grew up around them sons, man. They just snap. Maybe they back, maybe that they, breed, they bred them better. But back then, bro, they snap, man. They was biting people for no reason, man. The owners, all that. Hmm. I like that answer. The biggest, biggest pet, the biggest pet bull that was run in Los Angeles County was a dog by the name of Tattoo. Hmm. He lived right by Lindbergh, and his owner was Nordy. Lindbergh. Tattoo. Lindbergh Elementary. Lindbergh Elementary. You can see him running. He run right past the fence when the kids got playing. He just run up and down. I around. remember where Lindbergh is. I went to Mark Twain Elementary. We used to play basketball. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the middle of Linwood. Finger wave. Or Jerry Curl? Jerry Curl. <laughs> I destroyed a lot of colors, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, because when you spread that good spread, or in fact, it I dropped did down. First, I did the first Rose Curl hairspray commercial ever. You did the what? 
I was the one that did the first World of Curls hairspray commercial ever. Get out of here. Right now, you can go, look it up on YouTube. It's me and this girl. We work up to eight hours, eight hours a day on our dance. With World of Curls hair product, it gets that extra time. You we work hard on our dance. Up to eight hours a day. Worlds of Curls Gel Activator and Instant Moisturizer gives us that extra time. While conditioning and making our hair easy to style. But without breaking, dripping, or buildup. Worlds of Curls brings luster and body to your hair. With Worlds of Curls hair products, we do the breaking, not our hair. You did the first Worlds of Curl commercial. The first dance Worlds of Curls hair products. Well, first dance Worlds of Curls. Okay. That makes a difference by putting dance in it. So you was dancing in the commercial. Yeah. And you were swinging your curl. Yeah. But they had cut all my hair off, bro. They, they, they left me a little tail. And they cut it all up. And said, Look, Do you remember this. the year? Um, The World of Carol's Hair Products. Uh, probably, I don't know. Or it had to be early 80s. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 1985. 85? Yep, but you can Google it because I saw it on YouTube the other day. My Jerry it's, Curl days, my Jerry Curl days was more like 83, 84, 82, 82, 83. No, because I had left, uh, I left Breaking 2 right in the middle of the movie to go do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was a buyout commercial, so hey, all. Low Rider or Mercedes Benz? Low Rider. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, low rider Ooh. by far. Okay. Because if it's a band, that means the band's gonna be in tip top shape. So the low rider's gonna be in tip top shape. Okay, okay, okay. Hawaii or Jamaica? It's funny you say that. I'm getting ready to go to Hawaii in six weeks. Well, why you didn't go to Jamaica, man? <laughs> no, man. My, <laughs> my wife wanted to see things that way, so I had to go that way. <laughs> Okay, that makes sense. That. Wifey, wifey made the choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mike, Michael Jackson, or Prince? Michael Jackson. Bro. Prince was. Prince was amazing, man. There's nobody that could touch Prince, bro. Musically, singing. All of that, but Michael, bro, the 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 charity that he was given out for cancer patients and children, the charity alone, bro, who does a concert that makes eighty million dollars and gives a whole freaking thing away to charity? Well, in, in defense of Prince, Prince did the same thing, but he did. He just kept his his, re his religion. They don't. They're not allowed to boast it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali? Mike Tyson. Ali. I'm a little disappointed it took you that long to even answer that, man. No, because I wanted to respect Mike. Because he's the youngest heavyweight in the world. And I've never seen a fight come in a ring and beat down grown men. At 20 years old. <clears throat> I watch Mike that Tyson. I watch Mike Tyson a lot. And I, he has a podcast and he's doing talk shows and interviews. And his respect for people is not 100%. He, he respects people to certain levels. And the way he talks to people, he'll be rude to one person. He'll be kind of rude to the next person. Some mm -hmm. people he give partial respect to. But Muhammad Ali is the only person I've seen him give 100% respect Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And he was a revolutionary. Yeah. He stood for he stood for a real justice and a cause. This man did not go to the war. Yeah. Kill anybody. I yeah. got I got to give it up to him for that. Tupac or Biggie Smalls? Pac. Tupac, bro. I yes. want, you know, that's it, that's it. I have to pick one? That should be a tie-up right there, bro. You know, when you look at the history of each each one and how they work, and they used to be, like, connected with each other as mm. friends, and then they kind of, like, beefed out. Oh, both of them was incredible. 
they both have incredible stories. But Pac, uh, Pac, bro, because he stood for our people. Hey, he was fighting for our people. Name a rapper, homie, that you think would look dope if he was a pop locker, too. Most deaf. <laughs> Most deaf? <laughs> Most deaf is Kali. Kali? 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 Hey, but he'll look tight. Okay. Yeah, look tight. <laughs> Most Z deaf slender. Got that, that African way about him. Ooh. Okay. Most deaf will get in your butt if he's a popper. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> get in your butt. What about uh, Z Zap or Parliament? That's a tough one, ain't it? You got that talk yeah, box from Roger Trotman. That gave me my hit, and Parliament gave me my wave. Ooh. Um, dang, bro. I, I don't want to be a fruitcake, man. <laughs> I do not want to be a fruitcake, bro. But I, I, if I had to pick one, I guess I'd go with that, man. Ew. Put it up. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 Yeah. But Parliament, man, a toast to the park. It makes you go, bro. And you it ever been, you, you ever been to, it. you ever been to a Parliament concert? I've been to a Parliament concert, yeah. Oh, I never got to see one, man. You saw the mothership man, and everything? Man, that's where they were smoking weed inside of the Long Beach Arena. <laughs> It was, it was smoked out in there, man. I didn't even know. Oh, Jerry you went Knight. to that one. What year was that concert? Uh, the 70, uh, the 82. 1982, I believe it was 1982. If I'm not mistaken, Parliament and Funkadelic. Snoop Dogg or Ice Cube? Q. Really? Q. I love Snoop, bro. I love Snoop. I like the way his life story went. The whole night, but Cube, Cube showed me like a little bit more because I know Snoop works for kids and he does a lot of different things. But Cube showed me like I'm gonna put all y'all back to work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all jobs. I'm gonna help y'all working with me. Would the answer change if I asked you who would you rather? What's whose music would you rather pop to? Oh, in that sense, Ice Cube. Oh, so the answer wouldn't change. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Horny little devil came with some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cute, bro. Okay. Okay. Give them a good for black skin. <laughs> good yeah. times or what's happening? Ooh. Uh. Good times. You got JJ. Or what's happening? Dino Mai, and you got you got I rerun. Really rerun was locking. I, I, I really felt bad for. Both of those shows because wow. it showed us in a because it showed us in a starving light, like yeah. like, well, like you know, and it was probably true because we a lot of it was getting kind of that like ghetto movie. Not so much with, with what's happening. It was for the Cosby's and the Will Smith show, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. We would be looking like a bunch of poor people. Don't forget, family matters. Yeah, uh, good times. I'd have to give it up to. Uh, Rerun. Okay. I have to give it up to that show. Because Raj was funny as hell, huh? Yeah. <laughs> D, D was super funny. And yeah. They had, they had a, lot of, a lot of points, you know. James, though, man, I mean, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. It was, just, it was heartbreaking, man. I felt bad for him, like, <laughs> watching that movie, man. I was like, Mama, we like that? Especially like, when no, Penny was getting like her butt whooped and shit. And yeah, bro. We were better than that, man. Yeah. But Hollywood, again, would not allow us to show our true culture. But you know what? I don't know if you know it or not, but the same dude is responsible for the Jeffersons, uh, Sanford and Son, uh, What's Happening, Good Times. It's the same see, dude. So I, can't, I can't hate him because he got us on TV. <laughs> yeah. You got to see, they got to work out to see a, a, a exciting moments of black families. Yeah. So I can't really hate on the dude. Like, sometimes we have to start at the bottom in order to rise to that top. So, right. yeah. 
Barack, Barack Obama out. or Martin Luther King? Martin Luther King. <clears throat> State your reason why you why you choosing. Um, it's obvious, you know. Barack, much love to my brother, but the brother didn't do nothing for us, man. He didn't, he didn't advance us to that level. Dr. King gave his life, bro. You know, no matter what the cause, what people say, what happened, what happened, he gave he gave his life for us to have. The ability to vote and to stand up. Rise out of the occasion, bro. Stand up. You know, I'd rather I'd rather go up on my feet than go up on my knees. Yeah. Hey, appreciate that answer, man. <coughs> One on Bandit. We have come to the end <coughs> of the interview. <coughs> I love your stories, man. Appreciate you sharing it with us. And before you go, we got to throw a wave back and forth to each other. You want to throw it off or I throw it off? Oh, for sure. Did I mention Robert Bell? No, you yeah, didn't. You did Robert Bell. You didn't mention Robert Bell? Robert Bell, man. Amazing. Freak is even still now. He get out, bro. He get out. He was doing contortionists before the contortionists the, people started doing That's Robert That's Bell. Robert Bell, right? That's Robert Bell. He turned his whole head around. Yeah. All the way to the back. Like back here, and he was looking at you about this. It come about this much like that. With Rob, he was with Robot Prince, right? <clears throat> yeah. 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 Right on. Pop Lock Love to Robert Bell. We got to get you on the show, man. Let me get that right, wave. Right. You ready? You, you throwing that wave or you want me to throw it? I throw it. Come on. Oh. Oh, man. Ah, uh. <laughs> ah, nasty. Yeah. Uh, so you gonna make me get up and start? Hitting, bro. <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, for all the poppers out there, if I missed you guys, man, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I apologize. There was so many in my head at the time, but I hope I was able to uh, clear up a lot of stuff. Hey man, this is just part yeah, one. We, I'm sorry we, about that, you guys from choking. <clears throat> I got excited when he mentioned the Dr. King. <laughs> I took a breath and it went. I mean, the, the saliva went down the wrong pipe. I had to take off running, bro, because I was gonna sit in and choke in front of you on camera. It's all good, little um, trusty. I'll say I got some water. I was straight. <clears throat> hey, this just always have water next to you in your interview, by the way. This just part one, man. We're gonna have a part two. We're gonna sit down and chop it up again, um, Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard the legend, David Smythe, a.k.a. One-Armed Bandit from Linwood, California. Booyah! 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 What's pop locking, y'all? If you have not subscribed to Cool Boys Boxing Camp and Dance Academy, man, push that button. Come on. Push that button and subscribe. That way we may be able to send you an email and bring you on our show. Pop Lock Talk. This show, man, is you know to let everybody know that, you know, you got the rap industry. You got the hip-hop industry, you got the acting industry, well, there's a such thing now as the pop lock industry. And this is where we talk about it right here. Cool Boy Sponsoring Kevin Dance Academy. Booyah!